guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Today is the literal third attempt at sharing with you all the things I bought off of ColourPop recently. I really didn't want to have to do this three times, but here we are. And you know what? Honestly, every time I filmed it, it's been a little bit different. So who knows how it's going to turn out, but I thought I would share with you some things I picked up off of ColourPop at this point over a month ago. <laughs> now, mistakes were made. I've learned a lot. I have a lot of thoughts and I wanted to share those with you along with just showing you what I bought, what I was thinking, what the reality is. <laughs> now, of course, this all starts with ColourPop having a sale. They had a sale going on at the beginning of July, maybe end of June, and it was pretty good. And I had a few things that I was interested in. And then from there, it divulged into chaos. <laughs> so we're just gonna get started. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I don't know how swatches are gonna go or inserts. I don't, I'm not sure, but I just wanna share with you. And although I have not tried all of this stuff because that would be almost impossible, which is part of the issue, I'll let you guys know as I go what things I'm like excited about slash excited to keep trying or try in general and the things that I kinda wish I left behind. So the start of it all, the reason I was on the site, this is from like the new shell opal of my eye. I don't know, whatever. The shell collection with this highlighter palette, okay? I feel like it's a little bright, maybe that'll help. I initially went on over there, creeped myself over to ColourPop. Because this highlighter palette just had me going, I really like my Seismic highlighter from them. It's one of the Super Shocks as well, and I knew this was going to be a palette of Super Shocks. Mostly I was excited for the two top shades that are more traditional colored highlights, but there are some like iridescent ones as well, and lately I have been into creams and just kind of tapping things on with my finger, and I've also been enjoying a sparkly highlighter if it's in a more neutral tone. And so so I thought this might be good. I picked it up and I do really like it. It is the highlighter I'm wearing today. I have enjoyed the two shades that I expected to. So for what I was wanting and expecting so far, this is pretty great. The only thing is that the packaging on this, I love the like clear acrylic stuff, but it doesn't like shut, it doesn't clasp. It's just kind of forever a jar, <laughs> okay? So we'll see how the Super Shock formula kind of fares in this open air, which it already wasn't gonna be completely airtight, so I don't know how that would handle itself over time, but now especially with it being unhinged, <laughs> yeah, I don't know um, how it's gonna work, but so far, really liking that. Great pickup, and if I had just picked up this and maybe a few other things, it would be really nice, but I'm gonna stick to a lot of my thoughts about all of it at the end, so we can just run run through stuff a little bit. Of course, I had to pick up eyeshadows. I picked up Super Shocks. I picked up quads. I picked up littler palettes. I even picked up some of the big palettes. So get strapped in. Let's start with the quads that I picked up. Yeah. <laughs> This is how many quads there are, okay? There were some really great deals on the quad. Some of these came out to like $4 a piece and a lot of them are from the Zodiac collection, which I've had my eye on for a long time. I've seen the fantasy, I wanted it, all of that. And so I let not only the sale, but also a really great experience I've had with one of the past quads that I picked up kind of take over. Actually, this is the quad that I had already. This is Triple Scoop. And I bought this last year and really liked every look that I created with it like I really enjoyed it and so I was hopeful if I picked up other quads I'd really like them as well probably the one I'm most happy with is called like a Virgo and I really like the colors in here I really like that I can use all of these for a look but also can just use them all individually if I wanted to I think all of the ones in the zodiac collection had at least one shadow that had like a duochrome flip to it and the one in here is kind of like glass bowl style like it's in that vein so I have like a Virgo this one I'm pretty happy with. This next one's called Tender Loving Cancer. Another one that I think is quite pretty as well. It's kind of similar to the Virgo shade, but this one leans maybe a little bit more purple and the matte's a little bit darker and again, leans more purple. So that was another one I was pretty happy with. This one is Never Taurus Apart, which is more of like a green. And then it has this really pretty golden green duochrome with like a red base to it. This one with the pop of blue is Pisces in the sky. Now. I really love the duochrome that's in here. It's so pretty and I can see it looking really great as like a single shadow look. I don't know about the other colors. Like 
this matte is fine this matte is fine but this type of blue it's pretty but not really like a thing i might wear all the time so mm, we'll see how that one fares in my collection this one's peace love libra now initially i was kind of bummed because it's a lot of the same shit but i also feel like this could create some really pretty monochromatic looks so thinking about it that way i do like to do that i could totally create something like this from what i have but that gives me some hope for actually liking this quad maybe more more than I think I will actually once it's on my eyeballs. I think the last one from the Zodiac collection, this one is called the Bold and the Aries, and this is one that I think had I seen it in person, I don't think I would pick it up, and that is a lot of this haul. Like, so much of this stuff, I know I said I was gonna leave these things till the end, but I'm not. So much of this stuff is like, if I had seen it in person, I might be like, oh, that's so pretty, but I don't know if I would have actually gone through with purchasing it or kind of living out the full fantasy of like adding it to cart and purchasing it. And that's definitely something for me to keep in mind, specifically with ColourPop. Like everything I'm gonna talk about in this video is pretty specific to ColourPop because it's one of those brands that just releases so much fucking shit and it's easy to feel feel like a little bit of FOMO and it's pretty attainable to get this stuff because it's not as expensive as other brands. So you hear about it all the time and if you haven't bought stuff in a while it can feel like oh let me catch up let me try a few things from here and there whatever and it becomes this big color pop order. Everything's pretty inexpensive it's kind of hard to say no to stuff especially if you're shopping on a sale or shopping like the last chance clearance because that was a lot of this stuff too. It can be hard to just like delete a $2 item you're like well what if that's a good one and I think that's another reason it's pretty tough shopping shopping online or I guess I can kind of feed into this mentality of like well let's try it is because ColourPop releases so much stuff and they don't put a ton of swatches online like if you look at their actual site where you're shopping where you're adding things to your cart if you're lucky there's quite a few swatches but even then they're kind of sterile and cold they're definitely not the fun Instagram pics and so it can be tough to figure out like texture and if it's warm toned cool toned how it compares to other things that they've freaking put out if you're shopping between different collections and so I think it's like easy to get into this attitude of like well let's just try it what if it's the good one what if it's the good one like it's not a big deal and so <laughs> you end up with a shit ton of stuff and that's another thing that's definitely happening anyway these last two are from I think like a stone collect some type of gem okay collection I don't even know this is called gotta agate it's really pretty this one's a really pretty uh, color story another kind of duochrome in here as well and then last this one is really ruby another one not that it's not pretty it's just I'm not drawn to these types of colors right now at least not at this saturation point like if I'm gonna do something that's like rosy and whatnot I kind of want it to be a little bit lighter and so those are all the quads that I picked up now that alone <laughs> think about how much time to just try all those eyeshadows like how much it would take and that's another thing that I kind of realized from this is that the fantasy of making a big order or like trying a bunch of things at once seems so fun seems so great but the reality is once it comes it's it's really overwhelming actually <laughs> like the amount of time it takes to try all this stuff is forever is forever and ultimately I'm realizing like I'm not missing out on ColourPop you're not missing out on ColourPop almost everything that they come out with is like decent like it's fine like you can make it work like maybe it's not the best but it's, you're not almost ever getting anything that sucks and I guess in some ways that's great right there's way less just shit products out on the market than there used to be but also mediocre is like not what i'm going for either so moving on to the next section of this <laughs> friggin video let's talk about palettes that aren't the big palettes but aren't the small ones so basically nine pans 12 pans that type of stuff a lot of the palettes that i was picking up were more on the cool tone side i was definitely feeling that vibe and i wanted to see these things actually in person and again see if i was missing out on anything so this is one of those nine pans again kind of in that clear acrylic this is called coast is clear i have used this and it was okay there's a super shocker two in here actually which i find kind of interesting like part of me likes that they're including super shocks I guess because I really like the super shock formula but there's also a part of me that's like again how is that gonna fare in here I don't really know plus to be honest I actually really enjoy super shocks on their own almost without any other powders maybe a little bit tapped out on the outer crease or something but I really like the super shock formula kind of on a primed lid only so this is okay I feel like 
for me, nothing special. I could see other people really enjoying it and loving it, but um, so far it's just been like, okay. A palette I am actually really happy with. So uh, we do have some winners in here, okay? <laughs> there are some really good things. This is the Of Quartz palette, and I, of course, wanted to pick this one up because of the cool tones. I love this kind of minky browns, and there's quite a few in here, and I do think it's really beautiful. Lots of pretty shimmers in here. Yeah, it's really nice, and I wish I had just kind of like kept it tighter, right? Like what was allowed to actually get purchased. This palette I think was another one on sale and I've heard really great things from you guys about the Tinkerbell collection. And I do wanna preface this haul too. It was like a trifecta of things. So I was shopping because of the sale. There were a few items I was interested in. Plus I had a few things in mind for videos and then I was also sad. <laughs> so it was like a perfect storm for me to purchased the amount of stuff that I did. I think I spent about $300, which because I don't buy from ColourPop all the time, I was shocked that I could get this much stuff for that price. Like once it got here, I was like, holy cow, this is crazy. And so that was kind of exciting, right? But once it got here, the overwhelming part and the reality part set in. And I think I've just realized that I really do enjoy buying a little here, a little there, having a few items to test here, test there. And really I'm using those things quite immediately when they come in. And I think what's hard is when all this stuff comes in at once, you're immediately like comparing it all to each other. So nothing seems as special. You're already like picking out your favorites between eight quads, like which one you wanna use. Whereas if you only got one, one, maybe two, you know, you have less to kind of be like, oh, I don't like this one. I do like this one before you even try any of it. But also you have like the chance to reasonably try to try this stuff in like the week after getting it instead of not. Whereas like if I had bought this stuff slowly over time, it would more likely get used. And I also just realized it's just better. Even if I end up wanting to buy some of this stuff, I could have taken the $300 I spent and done like 10 or I don't know, eight, 30, $35 orders and gotten a little out of time, tried it, made up my mind, got my thoughts and see if any of that stuff is like good for me, works for me that I really love. And like the end result would be probably same amount of money and maybe even same amount of stuff, but it would be over time. And I also wonder if I'd even make those decisions, right? When you choose to buy a lot of stuff at once, like it's a done deal. Whereas if you spread it out over time, maybe your taste change, maybe you're not sad. So you never even make those other orders. Maybe you never actually get the other stuff or like it's a fleeting moment and it passes type of thing. So anyway, okay, let's keep going. This is the Tinkerbell palette and it's a little bit honestly bright for me now, which it's so weird to think about that. I didn't really think I'd say that, but that's the truth. There's some really pretty colors in here and I can totally understand why people like this one. I think the bigger pan, nine pans, like the newer ones like that, I do think have been pretty nice so far, at least in this experience. Those are the ones I'm most drawn to. This one I picked up because I'm like, I'm into neutrals and ColourPop has so many neutral palettes that I used to write off so easy. What if they're really good? So I got the Blush Crush. No, 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 no. I really don't have a desire to use this. I know that this might be other people's like favorite colors, but texturally everything, it's just really not quite exciting to me at all, at all. I picked up the All Amethyst palette and this is a purple palette. Again, more that bigger pan style. Some really beautiful shimmer shades in here, but there's also a lot of mattes and it's very purple. And last for smaller palettes, the Plush Like Me. I don't even know when this came out, honestly, but when I was looking online, at least online, it looked like it was a little more cool toned. And that's not really the case. Like it's very neutral and it does look like something that maybe for fall would be really pretty because it has those kind of like rusty warm colors like autumnal autumnal I don't think that's right that sounds weird on my tongue but um more autumn like colors <laughs> So it's pretty, don't get me wrong. And I like the packaging, it's actually weighted. It has a mirror in it. Like it's pretty nice. I'm, I'm not mad at this one either, but how special is it? I'm not really sure. And I, I've just been rekindling that special connection and relationship I've had with makeup, um, especially just this year, like everything that's happened in my life, kind of more on a personal level has had me really excited about makeup. And I found so many special, amazing things. And I feel like a lot of the stuff that came from ColourPop. Maybe I thought we're gonna be special. Maybe I thought it was gonna be exciting. Maybe I thought because I'm not usually on ColourPop, this is gonna be a good thing. And instead I realized from myself that like, that's not what ColourPop does for me. A lot of this stuff just 
feels like unspecial not bad but not like great like not amazing okay last for palettes i picked up three large palettes this was more for videos and i was really excited for that so i am happy i picked these up except for one which i'll get into so i got the bare necessities palette i love small palettes and one of my videos coming up is actually going to be showcasing a lot of my favorite little pocket palettes but i was like still interested in these big palettes from ColourPop. i kind of wanted to see like what they're about see them in person and they're actually a lot smaller than you'd expect them to be they are the smaller pans like kind of the normal size pans i guess for color pop because those are a little bit smaller as opposed to the ones that i feel like are in newer palettes like this amethyst one if that makes sense and so because they're not huge this palette i thought would be like the size of a morphe palette or something so i was really happy that it's not that way it has a little bit of weight to it all of these you can take out which i'm really excited about and the bare necessities is a little bit more on the neutral side so there's some warm tones some cool tones and i actually seeing this can understand why people might like this especially if you do your makeup at your like counter in your bathroom whatever every single day this can kind of just be your go-to palette like you don't maybe have a ton or maybe you have a few for like fun things fun colors but this is like kind of your go-to and i especially see that experience in like a lot of my friends like they're not <laughs> obsessed with makeup like me and i can see them really liking something like this i did also pick up the stone cold fox palette because of the cool tones i just wanted to and something that i'm planning on doing with these is actually extracting quads from these maybe trying to recreate some charlotte tilbury or like natasha did Nona stuff. I just love that maybe I could do something like that with ColourPop and it's more affordable actually. Um, so yeah, I picked up the Stone Cold Fox and then I did pick up the Rock Candy and I was really excited for this. I really like the color story in here, but tell me why I didn't <laughs> realize that there are glitters in here. There's pressed glitters and I don't try, I try not to buy glitters, but this one... In the state I was in, I guess when I was ordering this, it slipped through. So I think I'm gonna probably just replace those glitters, maybe with something from that Blush Crush palette since they're the same size. And those tones will probably work in here and move them out. But um, yeah, I guess if I had remembered that, I probably wouldn't pick this one up. But yeah, I did pick up some big palettes and I have some plans for those. So I am excited for those. I don't know why, these just seem like nicer, almost like kind of volumes and books. And I can just understand why people actually like these. And that is one of the things too. Some things you really do need to experience or try in person to kind of like understand them. And other things you're just fucking right about at the beginning, okay? And I feel like the large palettes in a positive way, I guess, like I am actually excited about these. And I feel like online, it's easy to be like, eh, who cares about them? But in person, they're quite beautiful. All right, so we've made it through powder eyeshadows. Now, of course I picked up some super shocks. I had a few that were on my list that I genuinely was like searching out wanted to try so I'm gonna go through those first and then the sales section got me and those ones are regrets I mean I should know this I make videos saying like the sale stuff's crap that's why no one wants it it's on sale um and yet <laughs> and yet but anyway one of the super shocks I wanted to try was I heart this and this was actually a recommendation from you guys I'd gotten a few comments saying I should try this one out uh from my bronze taupe kind of mink video and this one is a little bit lighter which that was actually mentioned in the comments but I want to try this one out it is an ultra glitter I love the ultra glitter shadows I just wish that it was a little more consistent because this is another thing it's hard with the swatches with the filters with the sun glinting on all of them every shadow looks like it's a special little jewel of a thing that you should buy whereas the reality isn't necessarily that and so this was another one that it was really easy just to like kind of add to cart especially the sale ones where it was like well what if that's one of the really good ones and with ColourPop and the Super Shop they just don't stay in stock you never know and like with something like cosmic charge so unassuming it's just kind of listed with everything else and it's one of the best shadows like ever like beats out high end beats out all this stuff right and so you kind of like hope you'll get a gem like that and I don't know if I did this time I don't know if I did which is disappointing this one is called Lala uh, this is another really beautiful one basically all the neutral ones I picked up and all the ones I bought individually I am excited to try this one actually isn't an ultra glitter but it has some such a beautiful finish on it. It's just metallic and luxe looking. Like this shadow looks so luxe. It really does. <laughs> it looks like something Charlotte Tilbury would come out with. So that one has me excited. I picked up this shade called 2014 and this is another ultra glitter. It's like a beige, but it has multicolor shimmer in it. Some pink, I see some blue and purple 
really pretty on that one. I also wish with the ColourPop Super Shocks that they were more consistent in uh, how wet they are. Some are really wet, some aren't, some are dry as hell, like what? What's going on with that? <laughs> another really pretty one. This one I'm excited for. This is Aster, another ultra glitter. This one almost is like this rose gold, like, but a blonder rose gold. So it's not nearly maybe as rosy or as deep, but so stunning. Really excited for that. Low 70s is pretty. It's okay. It's like a peach with a gold. It's still kind of neutral though. It's one of those ones that I'd pick up hoping it'd be good, but you know, in the end, it's like not maybe my favorite one. But if this were just it, that'd be fine. I'd be good with that. I did pick up Dream Lover. This I was going to pick up, I feel like the last time I ordered Super Shocks, but it was already sold out and it is really pretty. I think that I just have so many indie shadows that do something like this. This has like a red base, a purple kind of blue magenta shimmer to it. And it's beautiful, but I don't think it's nearly as special. And I think that's something too that I'm learning. Like I'm basically just telling you the life lessons I've learned through this order so in case maybe you can relate <laughs> I don't know we're all here on the internet watching makeup videos so I feel like there's a chance you can relate but as much as some shadows really can deliver with ColourPop I would say overall I shouldn't expect and go into ColourPop thinking that a lot of them are going to be these really special shadows that a lot of them are going to beat out things that are already in my collection and I think that's something I definitely want to keep in mind again when I feel like I'm missing out on ColourPop like overall I'm not like even if it is the best shadow do I have things comparable probably in my collection anyway? Probably, and is it worth finding that one shadow? Basically like kissing a million frogs to find your prince. I don't know if I wanna kiss a million frogs. I don't know if I wanna buy a million ColourPop products to find a good super shock highlighter, you know? I'm not sure <laughs> because at that point I could have just spent the money on like a high-end highlighter. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think those are it for the ones that I wish I picked up. I don't even want to pay that much attention to the super shocks I picked up that again, I'm not saying these are even shit and I really hope I get this across. Like as much as I like regret a lot of this stuff, I'm just trying to like work through all my feelings again with you guys. And also I do do YouTube. So it's not like a complete waste and it's like hard to decide honestly, like, I'm traversing a new path and it's hard to figure out personal Lauren and like beauty channel Lauren is difficult. And so sometimes this is like a part of trying stuff, especially if you're not getting the PR, which I don't even mind. Like I like buying the makeup I wanna try. I really actually like that. And it's something that I'm, I'm learning about myself also as I continue to do YouTube. And all the things I'm saying here doesn't even mean I would never order from ColourPop again. It's more just like understanding what was disappointing about buying this because it wasn't what I expected to feel and trying to like avoid that in the future I guess and yeah I think that's it I don't know I just it's a weird video I know it's weird okay anyway the other super shocks that I picked up were all in sets and very inexpensive and these are the ones again not that I I dislike them or think they're shit some of them are really dry which I'm like yeah it makes sense that's why they're fucking getting rid of them but also it's just like a little more mindless. I think these ones felt a little more mindless. There was not as much like, what shades are in here? How do those look? Like, what do I already have? Like, that wasn't the thought process on these. I was just like, oh, they're inexpensive. And what if one of them happens to be good? Like, just add them, let's see. And again, if I could go back, <laughs> these wouldn't be added. And there's quite a few. There's some in like mint packaging. They're all in like different packaging. Definitely these were with like specific collections. And it really has me so like, I don't even know how you could buy everything from all the different collections. There's so much. I feel like I always focus on just the palettes and I almost forget that there's like all these accessories and things going on with the palettes in the collection. Like even some of the smaller collections from ColourPop are like, still have like four lip products and two cheek products and like a couple super shocks and some eyeliners like with a palette. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. All right, we're gonna move past the super shocks. I know, I hope you weren't wanting uh, swatches. I'm telling you. If for some reason later on, I really feel like I'm eating my words because one of those is like amazing, like I'll come back and let you know, okay? Before we get into cheeks and lips, which are the last two categories, I do have two more eye products. This was just a little moon stamp, so cute. It was like $1.50. I have the heart one from Milk, I think, and I've had it for years and years. It still works. And also you can use these and dip them into other things if you wanted to once they're like not working. So I got the Crescent Moon. I thought it was so cute. So I'm happy with that one. 
one. That could be like my one little add-on, like my one little fun little thing. If only, right? Okay, and then this, I got one of the, the stick shadows, another one, because I picked up three when I ordered a little bit back and I didn't love those, but I've heard good things from you guys about these stick shadows and I just don't like them. I've learned I don't like them. I won't pick any more up. I know maybe there's some good formula ones and some bad formula ones. Maybe I'm missing out on the few that are good, but this is the shade Cool Breeze. It's a metallic and I really did like the color. It's like a chartreuse greeny gold yellow thing, uh, but this is kind of dry. I don't actually like the size of these, the packaging, like everything about it is just not an experience that I like. So good to know, I've made a definitive decision to never pick this up again. And speaking honestly of definitive decisions, I've learned from this haul, there's one good thing that I've learned um, I don't like ColourPop lip products. I know, I know they're inexpensive. They're even in cute packaging, they are even a little weighted, but for some reason these just don't work for me, okay? Like I just don't like ColourPop lip products. I have some of the lip oils. I picked up a couple of those. Granted, again, these ones I think were more on the sale, so they were like $2, $3. But there's something about them, like they feel like as fine on the lips. They just feel cheap. I feel like a little kid, I think a little bit like, you know, I don't treat them special. They don't feel special. I don't feel like I'm treating my, like there's none of that. And I guess I do really like that, especially lately with lip products. So as much as like the outer packaging's cute and they're not like the worst necessarily on the lips, I just don't like the feel even. I don't like the texture. I don't like the experience as a whole. Some of them are pretty thick on the lips and I wouldn't call them super sticky necessarily, but you know, they're just, they make themselves very present. <laughs> a lot of the colors I got are quite sheer too, so they kind of all look like the same color, which I guess is my fault, I don't know. It just wasn't it for me. So I picked up quite a few, you guys. All of these, nothing really that special, okay? nothing really that special. And when I think of like, even if all of these are like 350 a piece, I could just get one really nice lip product. And I just think that's more my style. And that's another thing that like ColourPop, I'm not missing out on ColourPop because ColourPop isn't necessarily for me and what I want too. Like I don't want this many lip products. I just want the one really nice one, you know? And that's something just like learning for myself. Just cause you can buy more ColourPop maybe than I could even in the past, doesn't mean I want ColourPop now, you know? I don't know. At least not everything. A few things here and there I love. I love finding affordable gems, like I love that. But the wading through all the other products, I don't really love that, I really don't. The other two lip products I got, these are the glowing lips. And again, I don't really, the packaging is cute. Like I get it and I, it's affordable, but I don't love it. I don't like the smell of these. I don't like the way they go on. They just don't make me feel good. I don't know what it is. It's like a texture sensory thing. I don't like the lip products. So I don't think I'll pick up any lip products from ColourPop again. And I also know that they kind of go bad. And I remember that in the past. I don't think I've ever truly loved any ColourPop lip products. I was never into the matte liquid lipsticks. I don't really like their lip pencil formula, like lip liners, the lippy sticks at some point, even those like maybe back, back, back in the day I did, but yeah, they're just not for me. And now I know that for sure. Last section here, I did pick up some cheek products and this is a category I am pretty happy with. Like all the stuff, I still feel like I would go on the site, pick up. Maybe I didn't need as many, but I'm still pretty happy with this category. So first novelty wise, this was in stock. It's the Heart Blush and it's in the shade Flirt Alert. I felt like it looked a little more neutral online, but it's a more mauve color. And I like this. I think it's a nice formula. It's cute. It's fine. Like. This is nice, again, I'm not mad at this. I think it's pretty cute. This cream blush I picked up because it was on the sale. It's in the shade Roosevelt. I think Hannah really liked this at one point. I don't know if she still does. And it's more of like a brownie colored blush, which color wise right at my alley. Thought I would try this out again. It was kind of on like the last chance and I was like, all right, well, it was my chance to try it. And then I picked up a few of the super shocks, which I'm actually pretty excited about. I remember there was a time where I was like, I don't want to get any more putty blushes, no more putty blushes. And obviously I, I picked some up and I'm, I'm pretty happy with a lot of them. So my preference changing ways have, have come in. Maybe soon I'll be like, I actually love ColourPop lip products, right? No, but this is probably the biggest win of everything here. This is from the Tinkerbell collection. It's called Happy Thoughts. I love this highlighter. Like as much as I'm like being critical or kind of just like low-key talking shit about a lot of the stuff here, I kind of almost feel like 
man, but I did get to connect with this. Like this makes me like, well, maybe I should look out on some of the collections because this was in the Tinkerbell collection. It's just like a super shock cheek. Usually I don't give those a second glance. This is a stunning highlighter. It actually reminds me of like a cream formula version of the Pat McGrath highlighter from Holiday Time. Like it is this really beautiful like neutral beige with like a tiny bit of a pink thing going on. So stunning, so beautiful. And these are the types of products I do wanna find. This is like what gets me excited <laughs> and unfortunately makes me hopeful for maybe more than I should. And again, I feel like just like limiting the amount of stuff I'm getting at a time will help me to better suss out I feel like these products because I do wanna find these products from ColourPop. Like I do wanna find happy thoughts. Like a uh, Pat McGrath highlighter dupe, like cream version. Yeah, I do wanna find that shit. Like that is what I'm hoping all of this would be. <laughs> I also really did like the more blushy version of this. At least it looks like a blush on me. This is the shade Darling and it has more of a orangey brown kind of color to it. I really like this one too for a blush and I like that it has some shimmer to it. So that one is a great pickup for me. A color that looked kind of similar but actually isn't. This is Drop of a Hat. This actually doesn't have nearly as much brown in it. And so it's a lot lighter. It has the really nice sheen to it. And I really liked that one too. I love that so many of the Super Shocks actually had shimmer to them. I did pick up a matte, but I really do like a little shimmery blush right now. Nothing too metallic, but just, you know, like a nice little sheen. I love that. I have a few in like pink packaging, so I'm not sure what collection this came from, but this is the shade No Way and it's a pearlized finish. It almost looks like something like um, maybe NARS Orgasm, like something in that vein. It's a little more pink. It has a bit of a golden sheen to it. And then I think maybe in the same collection, this one's called Sounds Grape, which it does have a kind of berry, grapey, purple tone to it, like a berry tone to it. Again, I think these are so pretty. I'm very happy with the Super Shocks. I saved some good stuff, some good news at the end. One of the matte ones I picked up, this is the shade Yes She Did. I was hoping this would be like a sunburnt type color and it's definitely like that. It has just enough brown in it to not be too red, even though I'm wearing a red cheek today and I actually really like it. So I've been just experimenting with the blush. It's really about like how your foundation looks and how your eye makeup is, like all that can change if the blush looks good or not. And last, I promise we're almost there and then we can just talk. <laughs> this is the shade Brute Flute, another one that I think was a part of some collection. I think it was some champagne bubbly collection. And this is another pearlized one. And this has that berry tone going on but it has like a golden shimmer to it so those are all the blushes I, I picked up but that's one part of this order I really did like so at the end of the day some kind of deconstruction some final thoughts I would say about half of this is stuff that I am excited to continue to play with try for the first time knowing what I know now I'd make the order still and still buy them and try them type of thing and of course sometimes it just takes like doing it to figure it out and I think that's some of that here but I think going forward some things that I want to like keep in mind, especially specifically with ColourPop, is that like in general, anytime I'm feeling FOMO, I need to remember one, I'm not really missing out on ColourPop. Like they're always coming out with stuff. It's kind of their business model to make you feel that way, whether you, it's true or not. So hopefully that can give me some reassurance just off the bat. But also, I mean, as much as this stuff can be pretty and workable, is it going to match up to like the stuff at Sephora, the high-end palettes I have my eyes on, the indie shadows that I already have in my collection or again, have my eyes on? Maybe not. So when I'm thinking of what I want to try, what I have time to try, all of that, um, you know, how much do I want to fit ColourPop in? How, how many slots do I want to allot it? I also think in general, like learning that although I'm like into makeup and I'm like allowing more makeup into my life right now, a lot at once from one thing is not what I want. And I do really like having like a few things here, a few things there, different brands, different things. Like that is way more exciting to me. And this actually, it gives me negative, like bad feelings, like overwhelmed, that does not feel good. It doesn't feel good to not be able to like easily try this stuff on and get some thoughts on it and get excited and all of that. Like I want the good feelings from the makeup and that's where I've been with makeup for a good part of this year. And it's just good to know that this, even though the fantasy seems like it's gonna be bad, isn't. It's overwhelming. It's too much. I don't like it. And yeah, for the things that are good, I mean, they're good. I do really like some of this stuff. So it's not that I'll never order from ColourPop again. I just definitely want to buy a few things here and there, not get sucked in by anything on clearance. Like if I was not there to get it, 
it's not, <laughs> it's not coming, okay? I don't care if it's $4, I don't care if it's $3, like that's what I learned for sure. And I think I'm gonna end it here. I don't know, let me know some of your guys' favorite things from ColourPop. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's weird. It's like this weird like haul, yet I'm reviewing it, yet I haven't even tried a lot of it. Like what is, what is that? <laughs> the fuck is that? But anyway, some of you guys said you'd want to see this. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to end it here. Dear God, I'm not filming this again. So I hope this works out. And other than that, I'll see you in my next video, guys. Bye.